so this arts commission um, began with Maya Bosworth uh, in um, 2019 and we put together a proposal to look at insects in greater detail and to make art pieces about them um, with poems and sound pieces uh, celebrating them and their weird and wonderful lives. So we did a series of uh, workshops uh, from school children through to the kind of retirees in my village, <laughs> um, thinking about insects and writing poems about them. And uh, the fruits of those have been uh, produced beautifully by Eliza. She's done a really good job with them and they sound amazing. And it's really nice as well to have poetry restored to its oral roots in that way, because poetry began as an oral form and you'd have had somebody telling poems and stories and reciting them. Poetry, I think of it as music in, on a word level. So yeah, it's kind of a very basic music, I suppose. <laughs> We're very basic composers. We're composing with just the word sounds. I think there's a lot of research goes into the arts actually. I think people think we're just kind of inspired and you know splash some paint down or write a poem but actually there's a lot of thinking and research that goes into it and I think it can be frustrating actually that there are these uh, kind of hidden worlds. If you're interested in, I mean my writing's always been interested in the natural world and actually a lot of British poetry is interested in the natural world. Um, but there are all these kind of hidden scientific worlds that we can't always access because the language they use is very different and difficult to access. It did tend to be something that was the hook, like with the cockroach, who, which was a sticking point for me because I don't like cockroaches. So finding that they were good mothers was kind of the hook that took me in to that world and talking to entomologists about these insects that they love has also kind of helped spark that joy and I think I think this is a I think these insect poems are joyful and I think that is a new thing in my practice I, if we want to talk about something broad I think that kind of joyful playfulness coming back in is has been really nice for me and um, a really nice place to be with my work right now because you suffer your young to swarm upon your back and do not flinch or buck them off but carry them like a human playing horsey with her children, down on hands and knees, decrying the swag of her own loose flesh. Because you twirl your antennae gracefully to test your crawl space. It's really interesting to see someone's completely different perspective. I think I've never worked quite so closely with, with um, a talented artist like Fiona before. And also, I've never listened quite so intently. So I switched on my entomological brain when I was with her, uh, doing the work, but also going to the presentation at the end of the project. I found it really moving, quite emotional, um, because Fiona tapped into not just the kind of the, the sense of the organism, but also its impact on us. And some of her poetry was about her, her feelings and, and her projecting herself into the, into the insect organism. And the beautiful words which people were writing to use to describe the creatures which I've had a passion for made me feel quite emotional about it. So yeah, I did, I did a really new insight into how powerful poetry can be in what I would otherwise think is a very scientific topic. You know, when Fiona sends me a poem, you know, even though she's not a scientist by nature, she's really, really grasping to understand everything that the scientist is telling her and be able to work it into this like magical poem. And I'm really in awe of how much she thinks about the science and how to translate that into a poem. I'm really, really in, like deep in the poem um, and thinking about every specific line and word and you know how best to represent it in sound and um, it's just a real privilege to work in that way with poetry. We've been doing a lot of zooming and a lot of getting people to record on their iPhones and I think we're in a really lucky place right now where the technology is such that we can do that and come up with decent recordings. Before I would always try and source music and sounds from other people and online but now I feel much more confident in my abilities to make those sounds myself um, which is a massive a massive step and it, yeah I, I've just made so much music and sound in the past couple of months 
I've got this like library now, <laughs> which yeah, I would never have imagined I'd be able to do. So I also felt like I couldn't really call myself a sound artist, but now I'm like, actually, I probably could call myself a sound artist. <laughs> this Arts Commission from Arts and Culture at the University of Exeter has, um, it's just been amazing. It's given me this really liberated space to um, work on poems um, and just dedicate myself to uh, this particular area of finding out about insects and it's opened so many doors um, to be able to say you know I'm working on this commission rather than just being a random poet showing up and I also think that we're doing something um, quite new with the idea of this audio pamphlet and I think you know I think that's a really lovely thing as a as a as a art piece I think the idea of having these collections of poetry online is a really nice way of presenting poetry and I hope you know I'd like to see more of that I think more um, kind of experimentation with the way we present poetry and the way we experience it. I think both me and Maya were really clear when we began it that we wanted to inspire kind of wonder at the world of insects and rekindle that kind of fascination and wonder you have when you're a child and you kind of lose yeah just to kind of re-inspire wonder and um, kinship I think with the other inhabitants of this planet.